All right, everyone, the problem states a certain anesthetic contains 64.9% carbon, 13.5% hydrogen, and 21.6% oxygen by mass. At 120 degrees Celsius and 750 millimeters of mercury, 1.00 liters of the gaseous compound weighs 2.30 grams. What is the molecular formula of the compound? So to solve this problem, we are going to first use the ideal gas law to calculate the number of moles that we have. Then using the 2.3 grams with that number of moles, we can calculate the molar mass. Then separately, we're gonna use those percentages to calculate the empirical formula and then the molar mass of that empirical formula. And then comparing those two molar masses will give us the molecular formula. So first up, let's use the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. We're gonna use this equation to solve for N, which is moles. So we need to get the information from the problem that we need to solve this. So we have 120 degrees Celsius, that is our T temperature, so 120 degrees C. We also have a pressure of 750 millimeters of mercury. So that's a pressure, 750 mHg. And then we have 1.00 liters, so that's a volume. And then for our R value, we will pick the one that we need. So let's rearrange our equation to isolate for our unknown value n. To do that, we're gonna divide both sides of our equation by our t, and that will cancel out our t on the right side, and we can now rewrite this. I'm gonna flip it so that n is on the left, n is equal to pv over r t. So now we can fill in the values that were given to us in the problem. So again, n moles equals pressure, which is 750 millimeters of mercury, times V volume is 1.00 liters over R times T. Now for R, which R value do we choose? R is the universal gas constant. Well, it generally depends on your unit of pressure as there are many different units of pressure. So looking up in the top right, we are going to pick this bottom R value here because it uses millimeters of mercury for the pressure unit. So our R value is going to be 62.36, and then the units are liter times millimeters of mercury over Kelvin times mole. So all of that for our units for our R value. And then that is times T temperature, which our temperature is 120 degrees Celsius, but we need to be in Kelvin. So to get from Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273, and that will give us a temperature of 393 Kelvin. So 393 on the bottom here. Now before we solve this, let's make sure our units cancel out. We got millimeters of mercury on top and on bottom, so they will cancel. We got liters on top and on bottom, so they will cancel. We have Kelvin here and Kelvin in the bottom of our units here, so they will cancel and we will be left with moles, which is what we're solving for, so that is perfect. So now we can get our calculator. We're gonna start with 750, and then we will multiply by 1.00, and you could skip that, but we'll do it for good measure. And then we're gonna divide by, open parentheses, because we need the whole entire bottom to stay together here, 62.36, and then we will multiply that by 393 and then hit close parentheses and hit enter and we get this decimal here. So let's round to three significant figures so we would get 0 0.0306. 
So n moles equals 0 0.0306 moles. Okay, that is the first part of the problem. Now we can use that number of moles to calculate our molar mass. So we want the molar mass, which I write as mm, sometimes it's just a, a uppercase m. We want the molar mass of the molecular formula. So to calculate molar mass for any compound or substance, that is the mass over moles, or how many grams per mole. So for this problem, we were given a mass of 2.30 grams. So that will go on top, 2.30 grams, and we're gonna divide that by moles, which we just calculated was 0 0.0306. So 0 0.0306 moles. So let's solve that real quick. Let's get our calculator. So it was 2.30, and we're gonna divide that by 0 0.0306. Hit enter, and we get 75 with some numbers past that. Let's round to four significant figures, so we'll do 75.16. So our molar mass is 75.16 grams per mole. Now we're gonna use that molar mass of our molecular formula to compare with the molar mass of our empirical formula, and our empirical formula is what we now need to calculate. So to calculate our empirical formula, we are going to use these percentages that were given to us in the problem. So for this compound, we have three elements. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. Those are the three elements that make up this compound. And we have these percentages we're gonna assume that let's say we had 100 grams of this compound. So 100 grams of this compound that contains 64.9% carbon. Well, of those 100 grams, we would have 64.9 grams of carbon because if we have 100 grams, it's 64.9% carbon, that's 64.9 grams. We're gonna assume the same for hydrogen. So if it's 13.5%, that would be 13.5 grams of hydrogen. And if it was oxygen at 21.6%, that would be 21.6 grams. So using those grams, those masses, we are going to convert to moles because our empirical formula is a ratio of how much of one element we have versus how much of another element. So we need to get to moles. So we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor for each one of these masses. And we're gonna multiply by the molar mass of that element as our conversion factor. So grams is going to be on the bottom of all of these conversion factors and moles will be on top. And we're talking molar masses, so how many grams per mole there are for each of these elements. So grams per one mole, so one mole is gonna be on top here, and then bottom will be different because we're talking different elements that have different masses. So for carbon, we're gonna look at our periodic table and see that carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. So 12.01 grams on the bottom, one mole on top. For hydrogen, looking at the periodic table, we see that it is 1.01 grams per mole. And then oxygen is 16.00, so 16.00 grams on the bottom, one mole on top. We're gonna to get grams to cancel in each instance, and we're gonna be left with moles for each of these again, so we can get the mole ratios, which is essentially our 
formula. So let's do the math for these three problems. So for carbon, we are going to do 64.9. And since we're multiplying by a fraction here, we're multiplying by the top, dividing by the bottom. But multiplying by 1 isn't going to change our answer. So we can skip that and just divide by 12.01. Hit Enter, and we get 5.404. Stop it there, 5.404. All right, for hydrogen, we're gonna do 13.5 and divide by 1.01. Hit enter and we get 13.366. All right, and oxygen, we're gonna do 21.6 divided by 16.00, hit enter, and we get 1.35. And that is moles, and I forgot to put moles for each of these as well. All right, so now we essentially have the empirical formula. We have the ratio of these elements for this formula, for this compound. But we can't really write a formula based off these numbers because they're not whole numbers. We need whole numbers for our formula. So to get whole numbers, we are going to divide each of these by the smallest of the three. So which of these is the smallest? That would be 1.35. So we're gonna divide each one by 1.35 and we'll also keep moles there so that moles will cancel out and we'll just have whole numbers in the end. So for instance, 1.35 divided by 1.35 gets us one, and then let's do that same thing for the other two. So 1.35 moles, 1.35 moles. And we're gonna need our calculator. So let's do carbon, we have five, 0.404 and we're going to divide that by 1.35 hit enter and we get 4.00 with some change now depending on the numbers in your problem you don't always get exactly a whole number but we can round and say this is basically four so we're going to have four for carbon and then let's do hydrogen so we have 13 0.366 divided again by 1.35 hit enter we get 9.900 and some change after that so let's round that to 10 so we're going to round 9.9 to 10 so these numbers look a lot better so now we can write our empirical formula which is going to be C4, okay? So we have the C here, and then the four here, and then H10, and O1, but we don't write ones in chemical formulas. So now we need the molar mass of this empirical formula that we just calculated. So to get our molar mass, we're gonna multiply the subscript of each element in the formula by the molar mass. So for carbon, we're gonna multiply four, because of the four right there, times the molar mass of carbon, which we looked at earlier on our periodic table is 12.01, and that is grams per mole. And we're gonna to add to that hydrogen 10, times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is still 1.01 grams per mole. And then we will also add one times the molar mass of oxygen, which was 16.00. So one times 16.00 grams per mole. Okay, so let's put all of that in our calculator. So four, times 12.01 plus 10 times 1.01 1 
plus 1 times 16.00. Hit enter, and we get 74.14. So the molar mass of our empirical formula is 74.14 grams per mole. So now that we have that molar mass of our empirical formula, we're going to compare it with the molar mass of our molecular formula that we previously calculated. So to recap, the molar mass of our molecular formula was 75.16 grams per mole, and we just calculated the molar mass of our empirical formula was 74.14 grams per mole. So looking at those two numbers, 75.16 and 74.14, they are very close. So we're going to assume that they should be the same number or that they are the same. So what that means is that our molecular formula is the same as our empirical formula. So our empirical formula was C4H10. O, so that means our molecular formula is also C4H10O. If you want to see a different example where the empirical formula is not the same as the molecular formula, a card should pop up in the top right of your screen right now to take you to that video to learn how to solve that kind of problem. All right, so final answer for a certain anesthetic that contains certain amounts of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen by mass at 120 degrees Celsius and 750 millimeters of mercury, 1.00 liters of the gaseous compound weighs 2.3 grams. What is the molecular formula of that compound? It is C4H10O. All right, if you want to see another example, click in the top right. Please like this video if it helped you in any way. Feel free to look in the doobly-doo below for additional help and resources. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for new videos. And thank you, thank you so much for watching.